addition to the rubbings, I mean, you're, you're also many, involved in many other things. You're a writer, you're a poet as well. You also teach classes as well. Yeah. So now, I, for, for writing and poetry, I know, I, I guess, probably more, more, more enjoy the pursuit of poetry than, than writing, or? Actually, poetry is the only writing that I do. Okay. So, yeah, so anytime I talk about writing, um, that we live in Los Angeles and everyone's the screenwriter, it seems right. like I'm really, I only write poetry. Now this is a way for you to tell some stories about your life and kind of reconcile those. Like, what what made you choose poetry as like the vehicle for that, as opposed to maybe doing some short stories or anything like that? Hmm. Um. I think. Well, that's a really good question. Why poetry? I don't know. It's just something I kind of I was naturally drawn to. I think there are some people who like vanilla over chocolate. You know, I I think that in just terms of like personal taste. Poetry has an immediacy, an emotional immediacy to it that I don't think is present in novels or really even in short stories. And I think that poetry is the form that people run to when they are experiencing intense times. You know, it's, you know, just recently a friend's mother died and he asked me for a poem to read. You know, so, you know, it's, it's those, like, those are the moments that we run to poetry. When people have breakups, that's when they write poems, right? Yeah. Although, for me, it just seems, and it just personally for me, if I had to think about it in terms of writing, I find poetry so intimidating. It just seems hard, so hard for me to be able to do that, but what, whether we're just, like, composing a short story or writing, something like that, it seems easier for me. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I would say just in the literary arts, there's a lot of elitism that I think is so ridiculous. I'm interested in having more and more people into the fold. Like, poetry is one of the great loves of my life, and I want more people to experience it. And that's how I started with writing workshops. I think I was 25 when I started my first writing workshop for gay and lesbian youth. And I did that around the country for quite a while, teaching these writing workshops. Because the, the writings that, you know, the, the poems that we were reading in high school did not resonate with my experience as a gay kid growing up in the Midwest. And it took me a while to find them. I'm really thankful for gay and lesbian bookstores and that I knew, you know, how to find them and pick them up or even some of the used bookstores in St. Louis, Missouri that they would have gay and lesbian sections. And I would just, you know, pick up a book and start looking through it and that's how I found the gay writers that have really changed my life and inspired me. Now, you also teach classes now for seniors as well. Now, that, and I was reading where you say you at least require them to be there for the first two classes, and then after that, yeah. they kind of come in and out. Do you find that people just, like, they get a little intimidated by the experience of writing poetry, or it generates too much emotion, so they kind of, maybe they're there for the first class, and they kind of step away for a little while? Oh, no, they're, um, you know, attendance isn't allowed. It, you know, I don't have a strict attendance policy because, um, you know, I want them to enjoy the experience and they can come or go as much as they want. I'm not really like forcing them to write with a pen. Yeah, it's um, just sit down. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not like that. I actually started with the seniors because I, after teaching writing workshops for youth, I taught writing workshops for people living with HIV and I did that for a while. And I realized that elder voices are really the most muted in silence. Like queer elders are so invisible. And I wanted to give them a platform, as well as I think that there's something healing about the writing process, and I wanted to connect them with the love of writing. Is it different, I guess, with youth, because they're still trying to figure out who they are, but by this point, like an elder may, at this point in their life, kind of know who they are, but they've never had a chance to really kind of live authentically, and so this is a chance for them to kind of, kind of dig back in and, and show a little bit more about their, their journey in life? I think... In some ways, I think that elders are less self-conscious. Yeah, they have a greater depth of knowledge of themselves and they have a greater life experience to reflect upon. I think that they bring that to writing. I also think that when youth write, they bring that freshness of youth, right? And there's something kind of uncensoring about their experience too. So now, if people want to get more involved in the Gay Rub Project, how can they do that? Thegayrub.com. And on thegayrub.com, there's a link to locations where people can find uh, locations near them. I mail them rubbing supplies, and then um, the work is up to them to find the marker and, you know, go out there and do the rubbing. But, yeah. That's really cool. Wait for you to guys participate. Now, before we leave here, oh, as we talked, Stephen is a poet as well. So we're going leave, to leave right now the segment talking to Stephen to give him a chance to read one of his poems. Oh, all right. So I... This is my most recent poem, and I thought it would be good for Gay Pride. It was actually a poem commissioned by the 
Folk Art Museum for an exhibition they had on um, male quilters. I know it was interesting. And um, Aaron McIntosh created a quilt called Forest Frolic, and it had two male figures in it, and they were in the forest. And he stated that he was thinking about gay men in rural spaces. And, and that kind of stayed with me, and so I wrote a poem about his quilt, and it is uh, based on a true story of a gay male couple in California in the 90s that were killed, and before their murderers killed them, they made them record a message on their answering machine to kind of buy them time. So they were forced to make a message on their outgoing message saying that, um, oh, we're not feeling well, and we're going to see a doctor in San Francisco. And I thought how horrible for these two lovers to spend the last few minutes of their life doing this. So this poem is called The Message, and it's for Winfield Mauder and Gary Matson. The third voice gave it away, the just calm down and make it believable voice, captured on the outgoing message, an unnecessary four hour drive to San Francisco to see a doctor, death was already in the room. Winfield and Gary lived the rural life, a home and happy valley together, create a legacy of nature and science. They sold produce at the farmer's market, met two brothers in the next booth, siblings who shared a copy of the white man's Bible, burned synagogues, carried rifles in the trunk. Gary's brother did not believe the message, drove to his brother and brother-in-law's house to find the couple naked in their platform bed, blood on the walls, 22 caliber shots to their heads, something the police would later call an overkill. The, sem the supremacist brothers stood on chairs at the foot of the bed with rifles and hand, lording power and death. The brothers had written it down. These murders were a prelude to more. The fake message, the couple's final words, crackling and unconvincing, buying time while the while the killers reloaded new guns on Gary's stolen credit card. Maybe Winfeld and Gary made love in their bed before the brothers broke in. Maybe they shared a good night kiss before they heard the first shots fired into the A-frame house. Maybe they were wearing wedding bands that night when they were forced to say into their own answering machine, we've We've come down with something pretty bad. Wow. Thank you, Stephen. That was that was fantastic. Thank you. Oh, that Stephen Rains, everybody here. You can go to thegayrub.com, find out more about how you get involved in that project. Uh, coming up next year, please visit printmen.com or print, printmen.net for all your printing needs. Or watch watch Hollywood.tv, the internet's television.